What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Analyzing the Greats where we look at some of the greatest distance runners of all time and analyze exactly what made them so great. And in this episode we'll be looking at Lalisa de Sissa of Ethiopia who is a two-time winner of the Boston Marathon and he was also last year's New York City Marathon champion. And given that the Boston Marathon is just around the corner, I thought it would be quite appropriate to analyze a two-time winner who will be competing in the event this year. And what I find most interesting about DeSissa is how quickly he came onto the marathon scene. Back in 2013, when he won the Dubai Marathon in 2 hours, 4 minutes, and 45 seconds, and then only 3 months later, he went on to win the Boston Marathon in 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 22 seconds. These two performances skyrocketed DeSissa as a major marathon contender, and at the young age of 23 years old at the time, DeSissa's future looked very bright indeed. And after his second Boston Marathon victory in 2015, DeSissa had cemented himself as one of the best marathoners in the world. His status was so great, in fact, that Nike selected him as one of the three runners for their Breaking Two Project attempt, where they attempted to break two hours in the marathon. Unfortunately, DeSissa only managed to finish his Breaking Two attempt in two hours, 14 minutes, and 10 seconds. But given that he ran through 18 kilometers at a four minute and 34 second per mile pace, it's understandable that he had a rough last half marathon. And again, at the moment, DeSissa is preparing for the 2019 Boston Marathon, where he will be attempting an incredible third victory. And although DeSissa is still relatively young, I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to be one of the best marathoners in the world for the next decade or so. Transition! Alright guys, the first video we are going to take a look at today is the Breaking 2 project, which, which took place back in May of 2017 in Monza, Italy. And the goal here was to break two hours in the marathon, and that's a 4 minute and 34 second per mile pace, which is truly incredible. And I just want to make a note to say that this is really an unbelievable attempt just to be invited here and to be a part of history, really. So that being said, let's take a look at his stride and take a look at his form during the race. Um, all in all, he's got a really nice stride, but he certainly does have some negatives. One negative, the main negative that I think he has, is his upper body. If you compare him to Elliot Kipchoge up front, and really Zersene Tedesi too on the right, you see that he sways his shoulders much more than the other competitors. I mean, obviously he's still running much faster than I ever will, but it's, it's visibly noticeable here. You can see it compared to the other two. He isn't as relaxed, it just looks like. It doesn't look like he ever settled in in this race, which again is understandable because this this is <laughs> breaking two and breaking two hours in the marathon is virtually impossible. I mean, Kipchoge almost did it, but for mere mortals, very, very difficult. So it's understandable that he looks under stress because he is. But his upper body also is almost slightly too upright at times. Um, again, Kipchoge is kind of the uh, perfect form to look at here. He's slightly forward, uh, whereas um, you know Desissa in the back here is just really, really tall, uptight, and it makes his shoulders kind of come way far back when he strides. Um, again, that's uh, that's just understandable, especially in a race of this speed. Um, and another thing I want to look at is his foot placement when he runs. He does not heel strike, um, which is good. Uh, it does sort of look like he has sort of a, a middle foot landing, which is nice. And right around here is 47 minutes, which is kind of towards the end of his efforts because he started falling off the pace right around 51 minutes. Again, understandable. Very, very fast pace. And this is an interesting angle because you get an idea of how his shoulders really do sway. Uh, you know, just the far reach back. Just much more far than Kipchoge and Tedesi on the right again. Potentially an area where he could improve, but marginal improvements are very difficult in races that last over two hours. And again, right here is where he starts to fall off, so great effort from him. I just wanted to highlight that because I think it's a great race. And the next video we're going to look at is the 2018 New York City Marathon. Uh, and this is a race that DeSissa never had won before. And in this race, I want to take a look at his tactics because they're very interesting. This is the opening mile. He's up front pushing the pace. And it should be noted that New York, the first mile is straight uphill over the bridge. Like, very, very challenging, and he's pushing the pace. He's ready to shake things up, which, I gotta say, I respect it. It's It may not be the smartest move as far as, you know, conserving your energy in the marathon, but he certainly took the field by surprise as hardly anyone went up there with him. But, you know, 
I just find it interesting. And, you know, you get a, again, you get a good idea that he kind of sways that shoulder sway that I was talking about before. He kind of rocks back and forth, which is interesting. I just rarely see anything like that. So just wanted to highlight it. But again, right in this race, you know, this is right around the four mile mark, as you'll see coming up right here. He's in the lead again, just pushing, ready to go. And they pass through four miles and right around 1958. So they're, they're under sub five minutes per mile. Not world record pace, but, you know, it's a solid pace, especially for the New York City Marathon. And right here, 30 minutes in the race, just a huge break in the multiple people pushing up front um he's sort of resting out in the middle of the pack I, I say resting and he's probably running four minute and 40 second miles there so still moving but right here you've got another break just people pushing the pace all over the place he's kind of resting and chilling in the back there and i think this is a really important moment because he's not overly exerting he shook up the pace early but he's not overly exerting right now so he and you can see right there a good distance from first He's getting some help and, you know, running with a couple others. So he's sort of taking his time here and um, very respectful. And Katata up front there. Katata makes some crazy moves. He really, really opens up with just after the half marathon point. So he gaps the field right here is where he does it right here. Just before the half, excuse me. He's got about 30 yards, 30 meters on the runners. But again, DeSissa, you can see him on the right there in the back. He's sort of just conserving his energy. And I think that's really smart. He's not in a panic. And he's starting to push the pace right here, starting to try and bridge the gap between the gap and first place. Uh, and he looks smooth. Like, he looks really smooth, really moving, probably 4 minute and 40 second pace again from per mile. And he starts catching up to him. Katata's not falling back or anything. He's still rolling, but DeSissa is able to close the gap. And I think that's a really, really strong point in his running. He is sort of mentally stubborn, I would say. He just refuses to quit until his body completely gives up on him. And then there were three. One hour, 47 minutes into the race, we've got Jeffrey Camuro, you've got Katata, and you've got Lalisa de Sissa. Three really talented runners, and they are booking it here. I believe they're starting to run right around 250 per kilometer, which is right probably underneath 4 minute and 40 second pace per mile. And then there were two, Camuro and de Sissa. And this is within 10 minutes of when they finish the race, so this is really a breaking point. This is sort of the mentally testing spot, and is really good at this. The last stages of the race, he is able to hold on and make his move when he sees best fit. So you'll notice he's drafting off of Camuro here. He's drafting off, and then he makes the move right at two hours. His arms look a little crazy right here, but he sort of runs off of emotion. You know, he really uh, tests himself and his limits, and... I think he's convinced himself right here that he's it's time for him to go. And we'll get a good look at his pace right here. I, I may have changed the contrast in the background to make it look cooler. So I <laughs> just wanted to highlight his move there that he made. Really strong move. Camuro really didn't have any response. Uh, and what's crazy is that Camuro starts to fall, but Katata starts to come back. DeSissa really had the kitchen sink thrown at him. Just every runner and their talents pushed at him. Um... But DeSissa really is strong at the end of a race. He's won Boston twice off of closing strong. Um, not the best form, I gotta say. However, he pushes it. In two hours, four minutes, a minute left in the race, he is able to hold on, and he crosses the finish line in two hours, five minutes, and 59 seconds. Incredible race, an incredible athlete. Congratulations, Delisa DeSissa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to give Lalisa DeSissa a score. And remember, our scoring system is on a scale of 1 to 100. I feel like you know that by now, but I need to share it to you anyways in case someone is new to the channel. So here is his score. And I'm going to share a few of my thoughts here. I'm going to share all of my thoughts in the description down below, so feel free to check that out. But the first topic that I want to discuss is running mechanics. I think his gait is slightly inefficient when it comes to his arms, his shoulders, and just how upright he stays. I think he is a little bit too upright, he can lean a little bit more forward, and I think a shoulder pullback is way too exaggerated. So for that, I gave him an eight. For career longevity, obviously he hasn't been running professionally for a super long time, and really I expect this to go up in the future because I think he's got an extremely bright future, but for now, I mean, he really can't score any higher. Uh, I debated upon whether or not he should be in this analyzing the greats, but with Boston around the corner, I got really excited. Wanted to see what score he would get. So I expect this to go up in the future, but for now, it's just a 7. And for personal bests, I looked up his personal bests. Uh, for the 10,000 meters, he's got a 27.18. Half marathon is 59.30. 
and the marathon is 204.45, which he ran back in 2013. So, honestly, he's got some really good personal bests. I couldn't give him a 10 because obviously a 10 would require some very, very fast times, close to world records for a lot of different events. But he's got some really good personal bests, so I just wanted to share that. And lastly, for records broken, I gave him a 7 here because he hasn't really broken that many records. No world records, no national records. He has broken a few course records over the course of his career, but there was nothing super significant to bring up here, so the 7 was the highest I could give him here. And in total, that gives him a score of 85, and that's not bad at all, especially for someone that likely has a very bright future ahead of them. Um, so honestly, I'm just really excited to see him run the Boston Marathon on Monday, and I think he's going to do great. He predicted that he's going to win. That's what he said. So we will have to wait and see, but I want to thank you all for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe down below for more great running content. Comment down below of any runners you would be excited to see analyzed, and I would love to take a look at them. Um, so yeah, thanks again everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.